Finally, the mainstream media actually agrees with me and I don't sound like such a crazy person after all. EVs, electric car sales, have reached a tipping point in 23 new countries within the past six months. This tipping point marks the end of the age of the era of internal combustion. Here are the facts behind the disruption that is going on right now. These numbers, my friends, are truly staggering. Hello and welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. EVs have passed a crucial tipping point now in 23 countries. Canada, Australia, Spain and Hungary are the latest markets or countries to pass a 5% adoption threshold. Convincing everyone to adopt a new technology, says automotive news in Europe, can be difficult at first. Many people are still saying that um, EVs are a fad and they're not going to ever take off. The humble microwave oven, though, for example, two decades of fairly mediocre sales to reach just a tenth, as in one in 10 households, 20 years. But then, well, then came the 1980s. Microwaves had spread to nearly every kitchen within five years. That fast part of the technology adoption curve is happening right now. And that's according to Bloomberg Green Analysis of Adoption Rates Around the World. When this analysis was first completed one year ago, 19 countries had passed what has become a crucial, critical EV tipping point of 5% of new car sales powered only by electricity. This threshold signals the start of mass adoption. When technological preferences rapidly flip, since then, Five more countries have made the leap. Now, Bloomberg's analysis doesn't even include countries such as Thailand, which have also recently passed this threshold. The newcomers, Canada, Australia, Spain, Thailand, and Hungary, join a cohort that also includes the United States, China, and almost all of Western Europe. This trajectory laid out by these early adopters shows how EVs can surge from 5% to 25% of new cars in less than four years. And the interesting thing is here, there is only one first world country missing from this list, Japan. So you might be thinking 5%, I mean, 5%, does that really even make any difference? Well, actually, here's why 5% is so incredibly important. Most successful new technologies, televisions, mobile phones, LED light bulbs, follow an S-shaped adoption curve. Sales move at a crawl in the early adopter phase. Then they quickly go up rapidly once things hit mainstream. Once a product becomes an affordable alternative to something else, and when it itself is actually better, adoption rapidly speeds up. In the case of fully electric vehicles, 5% seems to be the inflection point. The time it takes to get to that level varies widely by country. But once the universal challenge of car costs, charger availability, and driver skepticism are solved for the few, the masses soon follow, as we've seen in Sweden and Norway, and even also in countries like Germany, France, and Switzerland. In the United States, the EV tipping point did not arrive until late 2021 relatively late for a country with its spending power. But there were reasons for that delay. Americans spend more time in their cars than any other populace on the face of the earth. And drivers demanded longer ranges than early models offered. Pickup trucks and large SUVs, which make up more than half of the US market, were also slow to electrify due to their massive battery needs. Today, US EV sales are rising fast. They've grown 42% in the second quarter of this year compared to the same period one year ago, but have not quite matched the explosive trajectory of other countries that crossed over. But the US is right on the precipice. That will change as Tesla, the world's biggest EV maker, prepares to launch the Cybertruck, and as competitors roll out EVs under some of the most iconic American brands such as the Chevy Blazer, the Silverado, the Ford Explorer, and the Ford F-150, the Jeep Wrangler, and the Ram 1500, just to name a few.
Now, believe it or not, a tipping point is also on the horizon for India, the third largest auto market after China and the United States. EVs made up 3% of new car sales in the country last quarter after doubling in only six months. India's homegrown automakers have been investing heavily in electrification and Tesla CEO Elon Musk met with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in June. Musk said he plans to enter the market as soon as humanly possible. Countries that cross the tipping point have seen rapid rates of adoption, with a median sales growth of 55% last quarter compared to the same period one year ago. As with any new technology, growth rates will eventually slow as a market nears saturation, the very top of the adoption S-curve. There will always be holdouts, but they're not really all that significant. In Norway, the world's EV pioneer, growth seems to have slowed after reaching 85% of new vehicle sales. But 85%, well, that's pretty much all the way there. Some countries, primarily in Europe, have been quicker to adopt plug-in hybrids, which have smaller batteries backed by a gasoline-powered engine. But plug-in hybrid sales have recently begun to collapse. Other countries, including the United States and China, mostly skipped plug-in hybrids and went straight to fully electric vehicles. If plug-in hybrids are included, the world sold more than 10 million electric vehicles last year. That figure will triple by 2027, according to forecasts by Bloomberg NEF. Because hybrids don't require the same level of infrastructure or consumer commitment as a fully electric car, the early phase of adoption for them is more erratic and full of false starts. A new hybrid model of a popular car might boost the share of plug-ins by a few percentage points without signifying a more widespread shift in consumer preferences and real actual committed adoption. A consistent tipping point for this broader category of EVs was not achieved until 10% of new vehicles were either plug-in, hybrid, or fully electric. At that point, sales in any given country tend to go mainstream. The United States, Australia, and Canada each came within fractions of a percent of crossing the 10% tipping point for plug-in sales in the last quarter meaning only a matter of months ago. And since then, sales have actually grown beyond the 10% point. In the United States, hybrid sales will likely pick up thanks to generous new incentives that went into effect this year. However, in countries without those incentives, plug-in hybrid sales have collapsed, such as in Germany. The concept of tipping points has often been used to describe price thresholds that trigger wider adoption. In the early days of renewable energy, reaching the point at which it became cheaper to install new solar farms than to build new coal plants accelerated solar demand from utilities. Now it's much, much cheaper to install a solar plant or a wind farm and battery storage than it is to simply continue with old existing coal power or gas. Sometimes sales volumes themselves can mark a turning point. After Tesla started selling the Model 3 in 2017, the company nearly sent itself into bankruptcy when it was not able to make vehicles fast enough to drive down unit costs. Tesla executives determined that pushing production past 5,000 cars a week would kick off a virtuous cycle of declining costs and higher volumes. And that is exactly what happened. Continued growth in EVs though depends on the ability of not only companies like Tesla, but also traditional automakers and their suppliers to make similar blind faith investments before demand has fully materialized. For example, Ford right now has openly admitted it's losing more than 20,000 US dollars on average on every electric car it sells. And therefore, as a result, we can see that most automakers are really slowing down their EV sales because they're losing too much money on every unit. They need to take that same blind leap of faith that Tesla did. Factories must be retooled and supply chains reconfigured. To achieve the most savings, the entire vehicle must be redesigned completely with electrification in mind. Even Toyota has admitted this much within the past three months. Transition costs can be suffocating until sales go mainstream. And if you're a legacy automaker with 
tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars of debt, well, this could be a very dangerous period. That means that individual automakers also have a tipping point, the threshold after which EV sales become self-reinforcing. In Europe's experience, once 10% of an automaker's quarterly sales come with plugs, that share triples in less than two years on average. This chart, which does not include Toyota, of course, which is the biggest automaker to not yet reach the 10% threshold, shows what is happening right now. Is the global transition to EVs purely inevitable? Is that basically something that will happen with certainty? Well, yes. So far, 90% of the world's EV sales have come from the US, China, and Europe. But those are the three largest auto markets in the world. They make up, in fact, more than 75% of global auto sales. That means that countries responsible for less than a third of auto sales globally have not yet passed the tipping point, meaning, well, most of the world has passed that point. Just four of the 20 most populous countries have made the pivot though. So countries that have a lot of people right now have yet to make the transition, but will likely do so. Even if though the circles of demand continue to widen, it's uncertain exactly whether miners will be able to keep up the pace for critical battery materials, thus the shift to sodium iron batteries. Still, however, global sales of internal combustion engines peaked in 2017, and they've been in decline ever since. Part of the reason for that is electric cars. This is a trend that Bloomberg NEF says will continue until the gasoline-powered automobile sits in a museum and it actually officially is killed off. Governments are putting more thumbs on the scales as they recognize the enormous health costs involved. In the United States, where the Biden administration is calling for EVs and hybrids to make up half of new vehicles by 2030, the 2021 Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and 2022 Inflation Reduction Act are directing hundreds of billions in public and private funding into everything from highway charging networks to battery recycling plants. The US battery pipeline through 2030 has increased over 70% in the past 12 months alone and has caught up with Europe. In fact, even exceeding it according to benchmark materials. Forecasting technology adoption is obviously, you know, hard to do. Even the most careful outlooks can be knocked off course by supply chain disruptions, economic shifts, politics, bankruptcies, and popular culture. However, battery technology and electric vehicle technology is improving at such a rapid rate that it's actually bringing the prices down even more than analysts thought it would. The advantage of the tipping points approach is that it reveals a range of adoption curves that are known to be possible because they've actually already occurred. Applying this framework to the entire planet, the EV tipping point was actually passed in 2021. If the trends hold true, and they almost certainly will, the rest of this decade will be remembered for doing to electric cars what the 1980s did for the microwave oven. Right now, we're looking at the greatest disruption in the history of modern mankind. Many, many billions of dollars are moving and flowing. Companies will almost certainly go bankrupt and new ones will emerge as powerhouses. Obviously, two of the emerging powerhouses I see right now who will disrupt the current legacy automakers are Tesla and BYD. But other companies such as GAC Aon and MG may also play a huge role in the oncoming disruption. Unfortunately, some countries are being left behind. As I mentioned earlier, Japan's EV sales have not yet hit the threshold. And considering the Japanese economy relies more on auto market, on its auto companies than any other country in the world, that presents a very serious problem. Either way, this is amazing news for the adoption of EVs, for EV fans, and honestly, for just the general health of the population, which will improve markedly once we can improve the air we're breathing in. 
What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.